And that duck is not going to let uh, give up there. That oh, oh! Okay, it was your fault, Tommy Duck. Your fault. No, 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 streamlining. Well, hi there. Sorry for my rough voice. I've got a cold, but I'm going to come in and try and fix duck. This is very much a delayed video on my channel. I've been speaking about this for many years. Many people have been asking me, Leo, what about duck? When are you going to save duck? Well, now is the time. I dare say uh, some people thought this video would never happen. I bought this toy brand new and it didn't work out of box. Uh, you can send the toy back and get a refund. There are conditions about that when you purchase toys like this. But I kept it because I thought it'd be a very curious thing to find out uh, what's going on and why doesn't the toy work out of box. Uh, this is Trackmaster Classic Era. The dates underneath this is 2009 era. I can't exactly remember when I um, I got this. I think it was a bit later after that. And it's one of these toys that opens up like that. It also took a C-type battery. Now, what? before I put the battery in, uh, and I have covered up the brand name there very carefully, of course. I'll just show you the battery has got zap in it. Very important to show that. We'd hate to mention brand names, wouldn't we, boys and girls? And we will put this into duck here. And if you remember on the lid, uh, on is if you... Push that forward there, and uh, it's a dead duck. Okay, there's uh, something you can do when it's like this, and I'll just unmount my camera. Okay, my camera is through the table, and it needs to be in this part. Uh, sometimes with these classic Trackmaster toys, if they didn't work, uh, you put the battery in, you have the lever forward for on, and if you gave them a tap, uh, they would wake up out of their sleepiness. But I think I've already done this with this dead duck, and um, from memory, we couldn't get it to go from those gentle taps. Uh, you can push that too far and break the toy apart if you really want to go for it, but uh, no, nah, this is definitely a dead duck. I've got some other classic Trackmaster toys here. Hank isn't working, but we're not going to get into Hank in this video. This Percy's working. It's a very similar style uh, to what we have in this duck here, but I've also got a spare duck uh, that came via the charity shop, and maybe this one here, which is a 1997 copyright duck, uh, may explain a problem and I can see someone's tried to come in and fix this duck here and uh, there's some soldering going on there and you start to see the way the circuit in these toys is done it's done by bits of wire and, and the wire has to be like interference fit up against each other I think the problem with our duck is going to be somewhere where the wire which connects the circuit together uh, has gone wrong I've got a Percy here, it's the same era as Duck. It's a working Percy, yay! And from the working toy, I can just demonstrate something here with a little tester. What I'm going to do is take the battery out of the working toy and I'll connect up something and it'll show that we've got a circuit. I've got an electrical tester here, if I set it there and I get the audible signal going like that. And if I do this uh, and connect it, you can hear that, that tells me I have a circuit. So still sticking with Percy here, I'll do a test here of the circuit, the toy's off, there's no buzz. If I turn the toy on, that lever forward, we should hear a buzz. And that shows us a good circuit. And now I've got dead duck here with the disguised battery, which doesn't work at all. If I probe it and we turn the toy off, get the nice connections there, there's no sound. Even when we turn the toy back on, da, 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 uh, there's still no sound. Now I'm using the tester because it gives us uh, a really nice positive way to test uh, this circuit. Uh, initially I thought it's going to be a problem here, but we've touched up these wires. This is the positive side of the battery end. Um, I noticed the bits of wires go down there amongst the switch. It could be a problem there, but I don't know. My gut feeling is sort of saying maybe what's going on underneath here is a problem. Let's take a look under here first. I noticed this area has got these funky triangular screws. They've probably got some, you know, strange name protecting this area. They say it's so children can't get into this too easily. I've got the right driver here, but I dare say you could butcher something in there if you haven't got the right driver. If I didn't have the right screwdriver, I would be butchering, wouldn't I? Okay, it looks like that bit is free. Pulling duck down has just reminded me how much more complex, or maybe complex is the wrong word, or how much, how different Trackmaster Classic is versus Trackmaster 2, which has very few parts. Okay, well that exposes us to some of the circuit. Let me test this side of the circuit here uh, to the positive end of the battery. 
Now what's always my friend when I'm making videos is that stuff called blue tack because then I can sit duck in that. He doesn't move now, I can come in and probe him. Okay, circuit testing time. Let's check that we're beeping. Okay, I'm just going to put the probe up on the positive side of the battery terminal area there and I'm going to come in and probe this other side here. So there's still a problem, okay, and not hearing a beep there. I'll put the probe up on the negative end of the battery here. Hopefully we'll hear a beep. Okay, so if you're hearing a beep there, that means that joint there is okay. So we're starting to work out this side of the circuit here is okay. Uh, the problem resides somewhere here. And it's either the switch or the connection of wire up on top of the motor. But I'm also suspicious about these circuits which use wire. There's also a connection down here, which looks to me like a lot of this stuff is just interference fits when things get screwed together. I'm a bit suspicious about that connection there. I suppose I'm going to have to start pulling some more things apart here. I've never really pulled one of these fully apart. So either I'm, I'm going to totally bust it and not be able to put it back together, or I'm going to learn a whole bunch of stuff along the way. Let's hope it's the latter. Well, I noticed the coupling just fell out the back of duck. Uh, okay, that piece just lifts out. Well, that's quite a nice design, isn't it, hey? Yeah, it's just looking at that there. Okay, I can, yeah, I'm worried about this connection. That's the one down here, this sort of springy thing uh, to that there. But now I've got this free, maybe I can start to circuit check this. I'm just double checking what connects to what here. Okay, if that's down like that there. Okay, it's this side here. This is the one I need to check. It's the one there, okay. Using the trusty blue tack again, and you'll understand why I marked that, because it's been spun around, we get our orientation, or we understand what's what. Get my tester in here, make sure it's beeping. Let me just probe uh, the positive side here, the battery, and this, so it's dead. If I probe that, we're getting a buzz on that, but if I put the switch the other way, we lose that but we're still dead here okay I'm just trying to get my head around here okay that's the positive end of the battery when the battery's in the toy this is all the switch in here which I think working okay because I noticed that it probed on and off when we touch this one I'm thinking this bit of wire here goes up here and goes to the top of the motor uh, not that I've seen that but that's my gut feeling because I noticed that this bit of wire here you see that goes to nothing, okay? So uh, I'm thinking I'm going to have to split this open here and see what's going on inside here. I'm just getting my head around how to pull this apart. It looks like it's these little clips. Most people, you go onto YouTube and there'd be someone who would explain this and I wouldn't have to have the trial by nightmare error. Uh, it looks like it just unclips and it's going to be a fiddly thing to unclip as well because there's multiple clips. I think if I undo that screw, it's all going to go poof and the... Uh, the switch is going to fall apart. I don't think this is a problem. I think the problem's here. Trying to unclip this and trying to operate a camera and trying to show you is actually quite difficult here. I'm just splitting it with my... Oh, I've just had a cog fall out. <laughs> Why do I feel like this is never going to go back together again? Uh, there's one more on the top here. I'm probably going to have the whole gearbox just go poof. And... Uh, uh, Yes, maybe it, it was a bad idea to start pulling this down. I wonder where that cog came from. <laughs> That's what dumped out. Uh-oh. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. I just noticed there's a screw there. This this will <laughs> this will completely wreck it. I just had a weight fall out as well. Maybe if I keep it up on its side, it won't be such a tragedy. Oh, another cog's just fallen out. I'm got there's not a hope in Hades, this thing's going back together, but we want to see uh, where the electrical connection failed, don't we? Okay, or will we, or won't we? Oh, okay. Uh, starting to reveal a bit more what goes on in here. So, uh, here's my suspicion. Uh, this is the one that, as I thought, it goes up here. Okay, it is actually connected to one side of the motor. And then when you look at the way they've connected these together... Well, there basically is no connection. It's just sort of, let's hope this makes connection because it's all just uh, all done like that. There's no solder, there's nothing. Um, I think this is the problem area, but we're yet to test the motor. And of course, there is the same on the other side here. Wow, just, there you go. See that? Yes. 
Uh, I think uh, this is the weak link up here when I see things like that. Okay, let me test my tester. We've got a beeping there. Okay, this is the positive end of the battery here, so I put my probe there. Uh, the switch is turned on. Uh, we've got the gearbox split, as you can see. I'm never going to get it back together. And uh, this would be coming up from the negative side underneath the train, in a sense. And uh, hopefully when I touch here now... Yes, we start to get a circuit, but before we had nothing. So I'm highly suspecting it's this connection here was the big problem. Now that I've had a good look at this and the way it's been made, I do not like this style of connection at all. Well, the fact is there is no connection. It's just uh, I hope and pray that things lay next to each other and work. If it's a bit dirty, which it looks like that might be, uh, there's going to be a problem. If we don't have enough interference going on when it's all clamped together, there's going to be a problem, I think. Uh, that is the root of the problem. It was that connection there. So I'm going to have to try and uh, maybe bend it a different way. Uh, put it back together and try and work out where all the little gears go underneath here. Maybe there's someone on YouTube who has a good video about that. And what I'll do when I put this back together, it's a very simple fix. I think this will fix it. Just basically push that tab over so at least there's a bit more to collide and be an interference thing when it's all clamped back together because uh, I'm not going to solder it. I still want things to be you know, the way they were. I've done that the same the other side. Uh, hopefully that's going to make a better connection. And as I'm attempting to put it together, I'll always come along and check the circuit. Okay, we have a circuit now. Well, after a fair bit of uh, mucking around, stuffing around and struggling, I've worked out you can only do this uh, when the whole thing's on its side. I think that's the gear arrangement there. In a funny way, there's only one way it can all go in and connect. Uh, it's a bit of um, looking at other older models and stuff and seeing what works. I think I'm missing something from underneath that one, but maybe I've just got to put it together to see what's right and wrong. Making sure that electric electrical connection up there is done right this time, because that's why we busted this thing open. Uh, but I think I'm getting close. And now it's uh, a matter of me lining up all the planets here and uh, trying to close this up and show you how it's done. <laughs> Although, don't look at me as being an expert. There you go. That's why you don't trust me with these things. It is a little bit fiddly. Uh, but if you keep persisting, uh, I think uh, I'll pull it off and so will you. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look that... <laughs> yeah, um... It's not as simple as it looks, is it? Uh, you need to see the, the you need to see how how rough and tough uh, dealing with this. How the, how do they do this in the toy factory? Oh, now I've lost my top connection. Oh, god! Just to help me close this up, I used the dentist tool with the end like that, uh, just to align the shafts. So when we clasp this together, it's all coming together in the right spots. So the fact that the shafts uh, line up with the areas where they should be. Uh, the weights are in, which is important because this model will need the weights. And before we totally finish it off, let me just check the circuit. Here we are again at this end. Just checking it there. And hopefully that's the positive side of the battery there. And this would be the negative here. Ah, yes. That's what we want to hear. Before we get too fancy here and put screws back in and finish this part up, let me just do a very rudimentary test by putting the gearbox back into the chassis of duck here. Okay, it's turned off with the lever back. If I can put the battery back in like this, where we're covering up the brand name, aren't we, boys and girls? See if duck works. Ah, yes. Finally, duck comes to life. And duck feels like he's got some power again. Yeah, so it's very important when you're doing this to keep checking, double-checking your work and not to put something back together and then find out it's not working. Mind you, uh, that could still happen to me because I've got a knack of uh, making things not work. I just hope I've got those gears and blah, blah around the right way and there'll be some expert screaming at me, oh, but that sprocket should have been there and that shaft should have been there. And I know some people will be querying, well, Leo, yeah, why did you bother fixing this classic Trackmaster duck? And I'm using the word classic there in a very strong way. Oh, I must remember to put the coupling on, which is part of the thing there. It gets sandwiched in there. Yes, a classic duck. Okay, well, I think the best way to answer that query of why I'm fixing it is I could not go down to the stores these days. Maybe I could go online and buy one, but I'd, I'd very much struggle to find a toy of this value uh, in the shops today. Everything's sort of been, uh, I'm trying to think of the nicest word, uh, cheapened up. Um, 
maybe I preferred it when they're a little bit more expensive. Yes, yeah, so I think there's a very, very fine line between cheapening up a toy a little bit too much and taking away a lot of the toy joy. And I, sadly, I think uh, that with Trackmaster 2, uh, we've lost a lot of the joy that these earlier Trackmaster trains were giving us. I know, uh, I know some people get very vocal about this, uh, but hopefully I'm being fair in what I just said. All the time as I'm rebuilding here, I'm making sure, hopefully it's working correctly. If I flick that to on, it makes this sound. Is that Trackmaster right or Trackmaster wrong? Have I done the gearbox back the front? Is Duck going to run backwards for me? Uh, if I was presented the Trackmaster 2 train, which is a far more simpler design, would I be bothered fixing it? Well, there's not that much that can go wrong with Trackmaster 2. Ah, oh, that's what we like to hear, isn't it? The beautiful sound of classic Trackmaster. Um, the problem with this design, now that I've pulled one apart, is the way they've done that cheap wiring with that piece of wire, and we saw how it went wrong uh, connecting onto the motor part. Um, maybe there's other people out there who've got a similar sort of problem. If I do that, it might help me get this lid on. We're not far from getting Duck uh, a run. Remembering Duck is new, and I've just got to get this part on here, which was the good, the good old fiddly way of stopping these toys from falling apart in your hands. We yearn for the days of classic Trackmaster, don't we, hey? Yeah, so finally, and uh, almost like a miracle, and th some people thought it would never happen, Duck has finally been fixed. Whether the fix is correct is another matter. Well, I better put something educational in this video or I'll be flagged off the site. Uh, this is a very rudimentary sketch of the circuit that was within Duck. This is the battery, this is the electric motor, and this is the switch. And when you're testing electric circuits, it's always nice to test a side first. In a sense, when I checked Duck, this is like the wire that was running underneath Duck. We checked this side first on the negative side of the battery. It was okay. So if that's okay, then we look at the other side of the circuit. There's either going to be the switch or the motor may have been bung. But in the end, it was this connection here that was the troublesome one. I've also drawn black dots here because these are other problematic areas in the circuit uh, because nothing's really soldered in this sort of circuit. And that's why sometimes when you turn these toys on, you've got to give them a tap to make them run because what you're doing is you're basically shaking the circuit back into life because there might be a bit of corrosion set up in any of these points. Hopefully that will save this video from being flagged and believe me that is a true th threat these days. Uh, what I'll do is I'll give Duck a run. Okay, I'll set up some track. Uh, we'll come and fix Hank another day. Hank was left out in the weather. That was the problem with Hank. And from being in the weather, Hank never ran again. I dare say there is a problem in the circuit in the sense like I've got to have to come in and uh, razzle up these circuits again. And uh, we'll have a quick squizzy at some of these wonderful uh, bygone era Trackmaster toys. Well, we'll start with these little ones here, uh, 2011, 2012, 2013 era. Yes, yeah, so it wasn't that long ago. It was a very different thing that were being dealed up to us. That's the price of Den there that'd be day, the diesels. I hope I'm correct in saying that. It looks wonderful, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know why I never unboxed that toy. Mind you, I'm glad I didn't, because now I can look at it, can't I, like this, and just uh, rejoice in the way things used to be. Stanley, look at that. You will not see detail like that anymore. But will we ever go back to it? Will that save the toys, Stanley? Because the toys are having trouble selling. Maybe we understand why. Uh, there's Whiff, and you can see the price there. You know, they always hovered, for me, around $20 for an individual engine. It looks wonderful, doesn't it, hey? Hello, Whiff. Does Whiff been, you know, hidden away these days? Or is Whiff still about? Harvey? Okay, that was quite an expensive one. Yeah, it had a powered back. That was what was unusual about Harvey. Yes, okay, little tiny awkward looking face there, but nevertheless, I enjoyed this. I actually got a few of these because I like the powered back. And you could power up other things and you could just have something in the rolling stock powering along. Dodge? Yes, uh, very much uh, bygone times, isn't it? And on the back of these, often you've got a bit of a feeling of a bygone era as well. Yes, very different. And I know this is 2013, not that long ago. Rosie. Take a look at Rosie's uh, cheery face there, freckles and stuff. Yes, uh, Trackmaster 2, uh, Rosie would not look like that. So yes, that was the single sets that I'd sort of saved up. I've got others, but I'm hiding from you. I look after these very carefully. They'll be worth a lot of money one day. And uh, onto these sets here, Muddy Ferdinand, 
Okay, I mean, look at the detailing in that. It looks spectacular, doesn't it? Oh, I shouldn't get too ravaged and raved up or else I'm going to have a heart attack. I paid $27 for that. You know, I'd much prefer to pay a little bit more money and get something like that uh, versus what comes today. Uh, ducks, close shave. I dare say it is associated with some episode which I wouldn't know anything about because, well, I'm just gabbering on here. Nice bit of rolling stock there, isn't it, hey? Yes. Uh, Catlin's Passenger Express. Looks nice, doesn't it, hey? Looks very, very nice. And curiously, there is, you know, detailing look you'd see on Trackmaster too. A lot of people said they didn't do that in classic Trackmaster, like just basically stickers on the side. Well, they did. So that puts to rest people saying that. Nevertheless, it's a lovely looking toy, isn't it? Um, price on that one? No. Um, Connor's Race to the Castle. And I'm just trying to, oh, yeah, King of the Railway. I can just read in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> so I sound smart all of a sudden. Uh, no price on that either. Yeah, I'm just looking at 2013. Just quickly reading there. Once again, uh, you will not find a toy like that um, easily these days, I dare say. Be curious to see what they are online. Um, Cole, Moustache, Spencer and, and Steamy Sodor. Wow, that is, uh, oh yes, that is quite spectacular, isn't it? Um, beautiful. Once again, I don't know why I haven't pulled this out of its box. Maybe it's because I needed the video like this. There we are. It was $27, and I said it had 20% off the price. I've got no qualm in paying $27 for something like that. And, of course, in the USA, it would have been cheaper. Ah, oh, yes, this would have been from uh, Day of the Diesels. Diesel 10 takes charge. I've got one of these unboxed, and, you know, I like this one. I like it a lot, although I think it needed a grumpier face. Uh, Sort of the in-between face, isn't it, really? Yes, um, Day of the Diesels, that was the new art. Target, 20% off, it was $27. Hope you can read that there. Back when I used to shop at Target, I no longer go there after I had a big run-in at the checkouts. Um, Stephen the Rocket. Yes, from King of the Railway. Nice, isn't it? Hey, it's such a different era. Such a different era, and uh, it was so nice to go back and remember how good it used to be. Yeah, so you got a clock back, you know, five, six, seven years, and that's the sort of stuff that you're getting. That's basically one child's generation, because children's generations in the toy industry is about five years. And within one generation, well, we basically don't see stuff like this anymore. So if you've got this sort of stuff, make sure you look after it. Okay, I've got my turntable of death here. I will stop it there and I'll put the duck that I have recovered from being a dead duck on here. Give duck a bit of a run. And it's weird. I sort of think duck isn't doing the right speed. I wonder if I've actually maybe built him back, back the front or unducked him. He's not going that fast. Yeah, maybe I've got so used to the highest speed Trackmaster 2 and that super fast time. I've forgotten how sluggish some of these are. There's a Tomy Duck. It's got a little bit more detailing on it. If you know where to look, it's got whistles and it's got a, a driver's, you know, detailing in there. I forgot what they call it, the windows. Yes, Tomy, hey. I'll put a nice C battery in this and we'll give this a spin. I think this runs a bit faster. I can sort of prove it if I put it in front of this duck here. There you go. It's going very fast. So I've got my suspicions about the duck that I rebuilt whether I've done it correctly or not because it seems to be a little bit sluggish watch out and it's been given the uh, the shove there from the Tommy Duck you don't see that on YouTube uh, very often do you? Uh, two ducks on the turntable also noticing uh, that's the one I rebuilt there there's a squeaking sound coming from it and that's starting to worry me as well what I'll do is I'll put the Tommy Duck on the inside track it can scream around quite fast in there, and I'll give uh, the, the duck that I rebuilt some rolling stock to pull along. Okay, there you go, uh, with the duck on the inside track causing some trouble, there's a nice bit of classic, classic, classic uh, rolling stock going along there. Uh, stuff we just do not see anymore, hey? Yes, troublesome trucks that uh, back in the day when they had different faces on different trucks. Um, I think this one here, I think, oh, I can't remember where that's from. I know, oh, that keeps trying to be pushed off. I know that dinosaur, I think it was from a Renea set. Uh, it's hit Toy Company era. How wonderful was that? That was like classic, classic Trackmaster. Yeah, and, you know, we'll never see anything like that again, I can guarantee it. 
I'm actually tempted to work out what that fishing one there is. I don't know if it was Toby or whatever. But, um, is Duck having trouble here or is Duck doing alright? It just doesn't seem to have the speed he should have and the duck on the inside is just tearing up the tracks. I oh, know one thing I can do the razzle up uh, duck that we fixed up's life. I'll put there and now oh yes, yes, yes and then things like that happen and we get a pinch point and um, then we get a stalemate of uh, some very strange train activity. Ah oh, yes, here comes Duck pushing the carriages along. Nice work. Duck versus Duck, hey? Eh? Look at that, that's quite amazing. The dinosaur's having a bit of a nibble in between. Again, you don't see that on YouTube every day, boys and girls, do you? Uh, definitely not. And if I attempted to do that for a second time, I'd never pull off such beauty in a train wreck. I think that looks spectacular. Uh, let me just try and ease this forward a bit. Oh, it's going to get messy, isn't it? And that duck is not going to uh, give up there. That's oh, oh! Okay, it was your fault, Tommy Duck. Your fault. As usual, that is the simple fun with these sorts of trains. I think that's the best fun, really. It's so simple. And we'll get Tommy Duck going again. We'll put him on the outside tracks here. Whoa, here's a goer. And we'll get the duck that I fixed up, which I don't think is really performing that well. But actually, I'd like to see another train wreck. Uh, uh, that's what I'd like to do. Well, like toy train magic, uh, Sluggish Duck, repaired Sluggish Duck, has got the rolling stock there going along. Beautiful rolling stock, isn't it? You can't keep your eyes off the good stuff. And what is going to be tra a tragedy here is that Naughty Tommy Duck is going to come along and uh, basically ruin the railway. Get Naughty Tommy Duck on, set Naughty Tommy Duck on there, and then we can just watch the shenanigans start. And I'm sure it won't take long for them to uh, get tragic. Oh, I can see a bit of a drama going on there. We haven't seen any more wheels off yet. That's a troublesome truck and a lot of trouble. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's almost like a repeat performance, and we've got that pinch point happening there again. And sooner or later, something's going to give. Oh, the troublesome truck is uh, smiling and laughing at that dinosaur. I don't know why, because there's going to be a whole stack of trouble in a second, I feel. Oh, yes, yes, and the uh, duck, Tommy Duck's still pushing, but not really um, doing that much damage. It's just a stalemate like that. Well, it could go on forever, couldn't it? Uh, but then again, the dinosaur could sneeze. And it could go like, oh yes, and oh, Tommy Duck is still, what is Tommy Duck up? The dinosaur's in there again as well. It does happen twice. Oh, Tommy Duck's just died. Well, I spoke too soon and uh, Tommy Duck has come back alive and is trying to kick along there and get things moving. And it's sort of doing it in a way, but it's off the tracks and got no traction, so it's probably best to let uh, old Tommy Duck's uh, turn off and be silent and... Um, yeah, before the rest of the train goes off the side there, pull it back up and save it. Because uh, we want to look after our toy trains, boys and girls, don't we? They're valuable. Well, I've got one more trick up my sleeve. That's the Tommy Duck. We'll let rest in the middle there. Uh, let's get Sluggish Repaired Duck going here. Back with the rolling stock and maybe have a look at the rolling stock again because uh, we love to look at the good stuff, don't we? And speaking of good stuff... In my hot little hand is one of the best Thomas toys that I've ever purchased that came from Japan and I highly recommend you go and get this one. It's the Tomy um, Streamlining Thomas. Came with a beautiful blue Annie and Clarabel. Uh, I don't care how much this costs, it's just worth it. And if we set this up at high speed uh, behind Sluggish Duck Strain there, it may cause havoc or it may uh, run wild. Oh, whoa! Oh. Yes! Um, a lot faster. Oh my goodness. Oh, Streamline is pushing the dinosaur there. And it's a real star, mate. That dinosaur's been a real pinch point. Oh, come on, Streamline. What the? Can you believe that? It's like a piece of art. I mean, that is just amazing. And then it's caught up there on that uh, rolling stock there, which is... It says Tommy. That one there, the fish crates there, Tommy. So it was the Tommy fish crates there have caught the Streamliner there. Uh, but a piece of art in the way that it all fell apart. Yes, yeah, go Streamliner. Whoa! Well, we'll give Streamliner a bit of a free run, I think, because Streamliner is uh, well worth looking at. Uh oh, watch out! Woo. See, that's off to nothing. Absolutely nothing, and then Streamliner's going to do something like that. Because Streamliner can, because, well, it's Streamliner Thomas. It just keeps going and going and going. And it's when the trains are going wrong, is when everyone's the most happy, but it looks much better when they're doing something like that. And that really is uh, one spectacular toy. Uh, I just cannot praise it enough.
Apart from looking amazing, the Streamliner Thomas has another ability uh, that we like. We like fast trains, but we also like trains that can pull a big load really fast. And really, if uh, we're having trouble selling toys, uh, this is the sort of toy which needs to be made. But not only that, uh, this is the sort of rolling stock that needs to be made as well. That's where it's at. Okay, that's where it's at. But especially, that there is where it's at. I know I sound like a broken record on this subject, but sooner or later, something's going to give. Just looking back at the video when I split the gearbox, and you can see what's inside and how the gearbox should go back together, I'm missing a small spring. It's a spring that goes up on the very top cog up near the motor. As for what that spring does, I've got no idea. I tried to find this tiny spring. I can't find it anywhere. It's just sprung away, as springs do. But maybe this is why Duck is a sluggish duck. I am a bit perplexed why Duck isn't running up to speed, or maybe that's the speed he runs at. But we'll let Duck rest as Duck is because, well, as far as I'm concerned, Duck is working, which is a miracle because Duck lay dormant for so many years. And if you're wondering about my Big Spider Attacks Daddy video, man, I have just been wrecked by that, I can tell you. I'm not going to win this battle. I'm now feeling like, well, of course, the Big G is going to win. I don't know. I really don't know where to turn and get you know, what I feel right to be right again. 2018, as far as I'm concerned, is the year that YouTube has died.